Well, let's go through this reaction together. What type of functional group is this? It is primary, secondary. Oh, secondary. Secondary amine. Because this nitrogen is attached to two carbon chains, two methyl groups, two methyl groups. So this is a secondary amine. Now, this cannot do a category three reaction. Why can't this do category three? Because it only has one proton. That's right. Two. Good. So it can only attack once. It can't attack twice. It can only attack once because it can only deprotonate once. And it can't dealkylate. That almost never happens. So this is only going to be able to attack once. So we're not going to have to be able to be in category three. It turns out, we basically just have to memorize this, that this puts us in category four. Even if it's acid catalyzed? Because I thought that was a base catalyst. Or um, just both. Yeah, what was your point? Uh, uh, I've, I've done it with base. This over here? Yeah, like yeah. base catalyzed. Uh, with a secondary amine? Yeah, so secondary amine reaction can be either acid or base catalyzed, I believe, but either way it's category four. Oh, okay. Because either way, it can only, uh, this nitrogen can only attack once. Now, notice what's happening here. In category four, the carbonyl oxygen is still being completely kicked off. The carbonyl oxygen is still leaving as either hydroxide or in the acid catalyzed case, water. So there must have been two attacks here, still. There must have been two attacks on the former carbonyl carbon. Where are those two attacks coming from? Well, the first attack is coming from the nucleophile, the nitrogen, and then the second attack is coming from the adjacent carbon. The second attack is coming from the adjacent carbon over here. Those are gonna be the two attacks here that, com that completely kick off the carbonyl oxygen. First, the nitrogen is gonna attack. That's going to break the pi bond to the carbonyl oxygen. And then this adjacent carbon is going to attack and form a pi bond, and that's going to completely kick off the carbonyl oxygen. We can't have the nitrogen attack twice because it only has one proton here. But we can go through that mechanism. Well, the beginning of the mechanism is exactly the same as for category three. It's only the last half will be different. So we should be able to do the beginning of this together. So let's go through the mechanism. I guess I was, when I said it was base, I guess I was getting confused because since we'll have a conjugate base, that will still act as a base, stealing an acidic H. So I'm sorry, what, what were you saying? Like, I was, I was saying mm -hmm. I, we'd seen it with the base, but it's like we do have a conjugate base ah, later. So. Right, that's right, from the acid. Oh, it looks like you worked out the whole mechanism, so that's fine. So, we took the proton. Whoops. I think you skipped a step where the OH left. All right, so then you had the OH leaving. Okay, good. Okay, so you're doing fine. So let's so show the, um, what we're going to have after this. <coughs> so then we would get this. Now the carbonyl oxygen is left. Then we can go through the 
press together. All right, now, at this point, the simplest thing would be to have the nitrogen attack a second time. But it can't do that because it doesn't have any more protons to lose. So the nitrogen, it doesn't do any good for the Even proton. Even if we made a mistake, wouldn't it be positively charged, which we right. wouldn't end up doing? That's right. You would see the nitrogen ending up with a positive charge, which is not a good final product. Yeah. So instead, we need to find another source of protons. Um, well, this carbon has its hydrogens on it. So we're going to get, I'm sorry, I should have said we need another source of electrons to attack this positive charge, well, we can take them out of this sigma bond to this hydrogen over here. We just have to me memorize that this is the reaction we're going to be doing. I think this matches what you already did. But the hydrogen can't just float away if it loses these. Somebody has to take the hydrogen. We need some base to take it. Well, we can just use another molecule of these amines over here. We could use this. Or I suppose we could use the water to take the proton, or too. Or can't we use the HSO4 minus? That seems the most logical. That would be yeah, even better. Because yeah. I haven't used I Let's see. After, from this step, I've got. From the first step, I got a sulfate ion. So yeah, the most logical thing is to use that to take the, this over here. But if they just gave you H+, plus, then you would use like methyl... Like yeah, then you could use another amine, or you could use the water leaving group. Anyone, there's a bunch of plausible candidates to take this proton. Uh, and at this point in the course, I don't know how picky your instructor are, is. Some instructors don't even require people anymore to show the mechanisms for proton transfers, and some do. So you'll have to look at your instructor's answer keys for the example exam. But the best thing is to, to, is to be careful and actually show someone taking the proton here. That gives us these products. Let's find this in the handout. Let's see, it's not on page two. Maybe page, there we go, page three. All right, so here we are, page three, category four, nucleophilic attack followed by elimination. Um, and here you can see that the nucleophile is a secondary amine, here at the top of page uh, three. This works with either acid or base catalyzed, but the reaction I have in the handout is acid catalyzed. And the part where you got a little stuck was just this last step here. This last step, the alpha carbon loses a proton at the same time forming a pi bond to the carbonyl carbon. Here's our alpha carbon. This alpha carbon, or at least it, it used to be the alpha carbon. This is the former alpha carbon from the aldehyde. It loses this proton, and that allows it to freeze up these electrons to form this pi bond over here. So ultimately, we did get two attacks on the carbonyl carbon. The first attack came from the nitrogen, and then the second attack, so to speak, came from the alpha carbon, in a sense, taking the electrons out of this bond and putting them over here. All right, and actually, this is the only type of nucleophile that gives us category four. Category four only has one nucleophile, which is secondary amines. Only secondary amines that I'm aware of go through this. So that just has to be memorized. Why do they have to go through this reaction and not category three? Because they only have one proton, so the nitrogen can't go through category three because it can't attack twice. So give us that. Um, let's see, so we need a name for these. Uh, this was our secondary amine. This was a ketone. And we need a name for this compound as well. Enamine? Yeah, enamine. I call it enamine, but I'm not sure what the pronunciation is. Enamine or enamine. I think our professor called it enamine. Yeah. Ene? That makes sense because what does the ene stand for? Amine. Enol. Why is this called an enamine? Because of the enol. Oh, the double bond, alkene. Yeah, so yeah, you don't call them alkenes, you call them alkenes. Okay. <laughs> so to me, the most logical way to pronounce this is ene amine. The ene here is from alkene. alkene. So this is a very logical name. This is a very logical name. What does the ene stand for? It stands for this alkene group. And what does the amine stand for? It stands for this nitrogen. So this really is an ene amine. This is, should be a very easy name to remember. It's an alkene and a nitrogen on the same carbon. Somebody was using the, the word enol. This actually is similar. Oh, that's right. an alkene with an alkyl. Right. Enols are similar, but different. This would be an enol. And again, the ene stands for the alkene, and the ol stands for the alcohol. Well, this is a similar principle where we call this an enamine. So if you're doing a synthesis problem, how would, um, you've really only learned one way to make enamines. How do we make enamines? With, with secondary amines. Yeah, secondary amine attacking an aldehyde or a ketone. 
secondary amine attacking out of hydro ketone is I think the only way you're going to learn to make these. These actually might be uh, useful to you later on because these can be used as carbon nucleophiles, so maybe we won't go over that right now. So it's important to know how to make enamines. All right, this can also be acid or base catalyzed. And again, I don't think you would be required to know the base catalyzed mechanism, so I didn't include that in the handout. If you, in the base catalyzed case, you would probably just go straight from the starting materials to the product, but it can be either acid or base catalyzed. Again, oftentimes people are sloppy, and instead of putting in the acid, they just say plus H plus. You might see that. 